Hi, I'm Jane Reardon, and welcome to Reimagining Law. Today, I'm joined by Lindsay Carpino, Legal Content Services Supervisor at Baker Hostetler. Lindsay also received the Emerging Leaders Award from the American Association of Law Libraries and is past president of the Chicago Association of Law Libraries. Thanks for joining me, Lindsay. Thanks, Jane. Thanks for having me. Sure. Before we jump in, I'd like to remind our viewers to please like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new episodes. So, Lindsay, the rise of information available and technology has vastly changed our profession. Tell me, is technology making the law librarian's job less important? No, not at all, Jane. I think it's really given law librarians um, a great deal of opportunity. Since there's so much information available and out there through so many resources, it's important for us to be able to call through that information and present it to attorneys in a very easy to digest format. And I also think that we, um, you know, kind of serve as a uh, a bridge between IT and the attorneys. So we need to understand the tools to best present them to the attorneys. So from the attorney's perspective, how should they be leveraging the law librarians at the firm? So I think um, many attorneys don't realize that law librarians also, uh, many of us have our JDs and also our masters of library science. Many of us have actually practiced. So we really understand the law very well and could do very complex legal research. Um, and also, um, we really have a pulse on new products out there. So any uh, new technology and research tools, law librarians are always reviewing and many a times best know how they will fit into library budgets and best fit with practice groups. How has COVID-19 changed the role of law librarians? So COVID um, actually presented a great opportunity for us. So for almost a decade now, law librarians have been trying to move away from our print collections and print resources into our electronic digital libraries. And we did this um, through COVID in a training that we called No Print, No Problem, where we trained our attorneys and paralegals on how to use all of our electronic resources in digital libraries. Um, all the print was actually you know, locked away in the office for over a year and a half, and that print wasn't being wasn't able to be utilized or updated by our filers so um, the print is now essentially out of date so it was a great opportunity to move electronically so are we throwing away the books in the law firm libraries yes we are taking a really deep dive into what we can get rid of because most of the print is outdated and most of these resources we do have available electronically um we do have some you know practice groups that really like their print so we are very cautious of that so it's kind of a good balance of both interesting uh the american association of law libraries issued a report um saying compared to 2019 law libraries are using less AI and machine learning tools in favor of collaboration and other tools. Have you witnessed such a shift over the last couple of years? I think that, you know, it might seem like we're using less because much of this AI is already baked into the resources we already own. For example, Lexis, Bloomberg, Westlaw, the big resources already have AI built in and their judge analytics and also their brief analyzers. So maybe there's less of a focus on buying additional tools that do this since we already have access to these tools. So where do you see the industry moving in terms of technology down the road? So I really see us focus more on niche products that support our practice groups and also specific client needs. I also see a move towards more um, state court analytic tools and also um, tools that really predict court behavior. So if a judge ruled a certain way on one case, maybe they might rule similarly on you know, a similar case. Also, our firm, Baker Hetzler, is unique in that under our practice services team where the library sits, we also have a team called Incubaker. And this team directly supports our attorneys and our clients through technology and helping support our clients in introducing their technology and tools um, to their institutions. And we have a really cool product um, that's a tool. It's basically a bot. So if someone writes into the library, say about bankruptcy question, the bot will automatically predict um, what you're looking for and it will direct you to an answer that, on a tool that we already subscribe to. It, this is available to clients, lawyers, which? Um, the bot is available to our attorneys. Okay, 
but you are directly serving your clients as well. Yes, we are. Is, is that a trend across many firms? Yes, I do see this as a trend, um, getting more into these bots and kind of automated, you know, resource tools like that. So we could be available 24 seven and also supporting our clients is another big trend. Yeah, so you're not only a bridge between IT and the lawyers, you're also bridging the lawyers to the clients through, yes. through these portals. Yes, definitely. That's fascinating. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay Carpino, for joining me today. Please like and share this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on new episodes. Until we see you again, be well.